As human beings, we tend to be drawn to what is aesthetically pleasing. We look outwardly at what is pretty according to society's standard of attractiveness. We then have the habit of comparing and contrasting our lives, our designs, and our paths to the lives, designs, and paths of everyone else. And if our lives don't line up according to what everyone else has, we feel that we have somehow fallen short. However, God's perspective, his viewpoint, and his ways are higher. He just doesn't see things the way that we see them. He doesn't view us the way that we view ourselves. And the things that grab our attention, the pretty, the popular, are not what God is focused on. It is not what he tends to choose. Further, the reason why things in your life may look ugly right now is because when God chooses you, he takes you through your unique process of becoming. Your process won't look like everyone else's process. Also know that the process will never be pretty because during these times, God is digging deep beneath the exterior, right down to your core to expose what is hidden beneath and to reveal that which is unbecoming to the fulfillment of his design for your life. Therefore, allow God to process you, develop you, mature you, and make you into who he ordained for you to become so that you can walk in the fullness of what he said. And remember that just because your life may not look like what is considered pretty according to the superficial standards of society does not mean that God is not behind the scenes orchestrating your life because his intentions have never been to make your life appealing or pretty in the eyes of others, but to make it beautiful in his eyes. Hi, my name is Alicia, and today we're discussing the beauty and the ugly process that God takes us through. I will also interpret three dreams. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. In a dream, I saw a painter, an artist. He was standing in front of a blank canvas. The artist began to throw paint onto the canvas with his hands rather than using a paintbrush. I saw the color purple being splashed on the canvas, followed by the color green, followed by the color orange, and then followed by the color black. After the painting was finished, however, it began to move. It took action and it turned into something different from the splattered paint that I saw on the canvas. It turned into a moving painting of red carpet with celebrities present. So the first aspect of this dream that I paid attention to was the artist standing in front of a blank canvas. A blank canvas is powerful for an artist because of the potential of what that canvas has the possibility of becoming. The possibilities are endless. It is all about the intentions in the mind of the artist because typically even though a canvas is blank, the idea of what the artist wants to create has already been envisioned in his mind. The artist in this dream reminds me of God. Ephesians 2.10 says, God made us what we are for we are his handiwork, workmanship, work of art. In Christ Jesus, God made, created us to do good works, which God planned in advance for us to live our lives doing. This scripture describes God as an artist, but not only is he described as an artist, but he is an artist who has already envisioned our lives. He has already planned out our steps, ordained our movements, and he did so according to his desire, according to what he desired to see displayed upon the canvases of our lives. It says that we are his masterpiece. We are his work of art that he created. The word created in that verse is condemned so, which means to make. Being made is not easy. And if we look at the synonyms of the word make, we will understand why. Synonyms of the word make are to interfere, pressurize, prepare, or to throw together. Therefore, much like the paint being thrown together on the canvas in the dream, as God is making us, it would appear as though he is interfering in our lives, changing our plans, allowing pressure on every side as he begins to throw together what he originally envisioned. Because as we walk through this life, we pick up habits and excess weight. We allow ourselves to be shaped into the image of our experiences. So then God has to strip us down and start over with a blank canvas. In this dream, as the artist is standing before a blank canvas, he picks up paint and begins to throw it on the canvas in a way that appears to be haphazard. It appears to be random. Sometimes God allows what can look like many different problems to be thrown upon us, seemingly insignificant trials, things that seem inconsiderate, things that seem uncaring, unnecessary. He is trying to break off everything that this world has placed on your canvas that does not belong. And while it may not make sense to us, it makes sense in the eyes of the artist. In research, I found that the technique of the painting I saw in my dream is called action painting. Much like the dream, it involves the artist throwing paint upon a canvas in a way that appears to be random. Typically in painting, the final result, what it ends up looking like is more important than the actual process of creating, the process of making. However, it is the total opposite when it 
comes to action painting. In action painting, the actions and the means for creating the painting are of higher importance than the results. Because in action painting, the process is what is important. The emphasis is on what the creator is doing. If we're not careful, we will go through our lives always waiting for some pretty end result, thinking that that is the most important part. But what is actually important is the process because the process is what is going to strengthen you and make you strong enough to stand in that end result. Therefore, while the process is not pretty, while it looks like a bunch of random paint being thrown in an inconsistent pattern, it's not about the end. It is about your process. It is about what the creator has envisioned. It is about what he is doing. Typically, in the creation of paintings, works of art, brushes are used to make strokes onto the canvas in a strategic, gentle, and nourishing way. The canvas is somewhat babied. It's coddled. It's quite graceful. It appears to be a delicate process. But when God is making you, it will not be like a traditional painting. It will be more like an action painting where he begins to throw you around, allow you to suffer, allow things to appear confusing, allow things to be difficult, unattractive, and unappealing. And while it may look haphazard, it is quite strategic because he allows exactly what you need in your life to smoke out the issues of your heart. Because it is only when you are under pressure, when things look ugly in your life, that your true intentions emerge to the surface. It is only when the ugly things happen in your life that the ugly inside of you is exposed. So God is not going to use a paintbrush where he coddles you to sleep. Instead, his chosen tool will be the fiery trial so that he can wake you up to the real you. When God began to throw things around in my life, the ugly that was hidden deep in my interior was brought to the surface and exposed. And in that moment, I realized that I was not as holy as I thought I was. Because it's easy to praise God. It's easy to believe God. It is easy to trust God. It's easy to love God when things are going your way, when life looks pretty. But what happens when God turns your life up upside down when he tells you no and the things that once made sense to you no longer make sense. When I had everything I thought I needed to make my life aesthetically pleasing to others, I was always careful to give God the praise. But when God began to strip away at my canvas and brought me to ground zero, taking away all the pretty that made my life look acceptable, the ugliness, the fear, the doubt, and the insecurities were revealed. However, I realized that in this ugly process, an interesting dynamic shift took place in my perspective. Because before the process, I only cared about how my life looked to others outwardly. Now, having gone through everything God has allowed me to go through, I do not care about what people think about me. All that matters is what God knows about me. Because that is what he bases his movements in my life on. Specifically, I needed to be delivered from the fear of men, from the fear of people's thoughts towards me. Because my life was a pretty mess. But process is causing it to become a beautiful message. Pretty is popular, but pretty isn't all always purposeful or powerful. It is the processes that God allows us to go through that, that turns your ugly situation into a beautiful work of art by shifting your perspective to what truly matters in life. In this dream, the order of the application of the colors is important. The artist first applies the color purple and in the word of God, purple is associated with wealth or royalty. After the color purple, there was the color green. Green is associated with growth, maturity or development. The color orange is next. Because fire is orange, orange can represent the Persian fire of God. Finally, after the color orange, the painter finishes with the color black. The color black, like all colors, has positive and negative connotations. In this dream, it is positive because it will represent a death to the flesh. Therefore, given the orders of the applications of the colors in this dream, we can see that it represents the processes of God. At our core, we are a royal priesthood. But to become everything God wants us to become, we have to grow, we have to be matured, we have to be developed. And the only way that you grow in God is by undergoing testing trials, the fire of God, because that is what will ultimately bring a death to your flesh, a death to everything that you thought you were so that you can be everything that he knows you are. In research, I found that people don't view the final result action paintings as pretty. In one particular article, art spectators view pieces of action art as unfinished, applied haphazardly, and ugly. However, an art curator challenged them, the audience, to consider that while something ugly could never be pretty, it always has to the potential to be beautiful because there's a difference between something pretty and something beautiful. Pretty is often superficial and unsubstantial. It's based upon outward appearance alone, but beauty radiates from within. It is often unconventional, out of the ordinary. Beauty involves more than something pleasing to the eyes. Quite often, it involves something that is hidden beneath the exterior. It is enjoyed by its beholder because of its spiritual qualities, not physical attributes. In the Song of Solomon, we read of the Shulamite woman. In one verse, she tells her bridegroom not to look up 
upon her because she is dark but lovely. This darkness represented the fact that she had been forced to work in the sun and in some ways she felt less than because of her physical appearance. However, the word lovely used in that verse is not vague and it means beautiful. So in this verse, this woman is saying that while she may not look pretty, she is still beautiful and her bridegroom agrees because if we read further in chapter 7, we see where he compliments her and tells her that she was shaped by an artist, that she is the work of the hands of a master craftsman. We know that the Song of Solomon depicts a romance between the Shulamite woman and Solomon, the bridegroom. However, it serves as an allegory of the love shared between God and his children, or Christ, the bridegroom and his church. So therefore, it is God speaking to his children, Christ speaking to his bride, about who he sees us to be, despite what we feel. Even when our lives don't seem pretty, it is still beautiful. Therefore, know that you don't have to match up to any preconceived image of what your life should look like based on outward appearance or any other identifiers because your path is uniquely designed by the creator who knows exactly who and where you are. I know it doesn't all the time feel like it, but you're not just casually walking through life. Things are not merely happening to you. They are happening for you. What's interesting about this dream to me is that after the paint is splattered all over the canvas, it turns into something totally different. The painting begins to move. It is a painting of celebrities on a red carpet. A red carpet is typically a place where artists walk. It is defined as a place for high-ranking dignitaries to walk on when entering into a building. In essence, it is a place where performing artists are escorted into a place of celebration. Therefore, it represents a place of honor. From start to finish, this dream will represent individuals whom God stripped down bare because the canvas is blank. After he takes away all the unnecessary things, he places them through this confusing, difficult, ugly process. When things in their lives are scattered about, they are thrown around. The individual goes through the testing, the trial, the period of growth, the death to who they thought they were so that they could be elevated into a place of honor. Further, because the red carpet is typically reserved for artists, this would mean that God allowed the testing, the trials, the stripping, because he not only wanted to elevate the individual, but he desired for them to become artists as well. He desires to use them to help others out of dark situations and dark times. He wants them to create something beautiful in this dark earth. Vincent Van Gogh is one of the most celebrated artists of all time. One of his paintings sold for $82 million. His most popular painting is Starry Nights, and it depicts a beautiful landscape of an expressive night sky over a small hillside village. But what I did not know was that Vincent Van Gogh created this beautiful masterpiece as he was gazing out of a window of St. Paul's Mental Asylum in France. All around him were people suffering from mental illness, yelling out in anguish, unable to function, unable to express themselves in a way that was understandable due to being oppressed in their minds. But inside of Van Gogh was a calm resolve and the ability to function to create something beautiful in the midst of the chaos. He was in a place of suffering, but instead of acting out, he looked inwardly and made the best out of a horrendous situation. He was trapped physically, even mentally, but not creatively. Van Gogh was in a very ugly situation, but he was still able to create something beautiful. After God gets done processing you, you will have the ability to have peace within, peace in your heart, even when you're in the ugliest of situations. You will have the ability inside of you to birth something beautiful when every Everyone around you is in a state of chaos and unrest. You will find that even in the places that should drive you crazy, there is still beauty. It reminds me of the verses in Psalm 38, which reads, When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, created, what are mere mortals that you should think of them, the human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge over everything you made, putting all things under their authority. The word honor is used in that verse is Hadar. It means magnificent, comeliness, and beauty. We often associate night seasons with dark seasons, depression, and fear, but God often creates his best masterpieces with a blank canvas where things are void and cloaked in darkness. And according to Genesis 1, he is known for creating beauty amid chaos, and he has given you the authority to do the same. In a dream, I saw a woman looking at photographs of children. Even though they smiled, she could see the pain they endured through the pictures. Later, she meets with the children and their mother. 
She immediately grabs them and embraces them. She loved them. The mother takes the children to the street where there is a celebration going on. However, the mother nor her children were welcomed at the party. They were scorned and asked to leave. The mother then turns to the woman and says, I only wanted somewhere for my children to go. The woman replies to the mother and says, I know where we can go. She takes the children by the hand and leads them into a dark room, picture developing room. The only things that were visible in that room were crosses that glowed on the ceiling. Yet the children could not see the crosses. So the woman took them outside and showed them the crosses in the clouds and in the sky. There were also twigs on trees shaped like crosses. Everything, all of nature was shaped like crosses. Once the children began to see the crosses, they yelled out with joy. I see the crosses. Look, look, I found a cross. I also heard in this dream, hands of authority. So in this dream, a woman is looking at photographs. A photograph, a picture, will simply represent a vision. More specifically in this dream, a vision from God. In the photo, she sees children who are smiling, but she could somehow see the pain that they hid behind those smiles. One thing that I have realized is that we may not all speak the same language, but pain is a universal language. And when God allows you to go through process, you know it when you see it. You have the ability to see through facades. You are readily able to discern pain despite smiles. This is why we should never compare our lives to the pretty lives of people we see, looking at photos on social media or anywhere else, because it is full of people smiling in photos big and bright, but feeling dark and small inside. Unfortunately, so often their pretty lives are only pretty lies. So the woman in this dream sees the pain in the children. And when she finally meets them, she embraces them, meaning that God has birthed a vision on the inside of her. He's bringing her assignment into fruition. The children are accompanied by their mother. In dreams, mothers can represent several people. But in this dream, the mother will simply represent Holy Spirit. So the children and the mother in this dream represent the children of God being led by the Holy Spirit. As they are being led, they encounter a problem. They try to attend this party, this celebration, but they are not welcome and they are asked to leave. This represents a place that is not accepting of the children of God or the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. The woman speaks up. She has a solution. She says, I know where the children can go. She then leads them to a dark room. We know that a dark room is a place used to process images and photos. So in this dream, it will represent the processing of a vision that God has given. Given the popularity of cellular devices, instant photography, and dark rooms are decreasing in popularity because the processing takes too long. Meaning that everyone is looking for something quick. No one wants to wait to be properly processed anymore. However, there are benefits of processing photographs in dark rooms. For example, dark room prints are made by a person. Therefore, each print is unique and it looks superior to digital files. So while dark rooms take longer to process photos, the wait is worth it because the quality of what is released is superior to the images produced instantly. Further photos produced in dark rooms last for centuries if they're processed correctly. And as a result, they have the potential to be more valuable over time than digital prints. Therefore, the woman in this dream is called to lead the children of God through a dark room, through dark times where they will be processed and developed to become what God ordained for them to become. And because they go through the process, because they wait, they will be of superior quality. They will have longevity. It will be generational, valuable, because they will have been processed correctly. Not only this, the woman in this dream represents those who are called to lead people into the knowledge of Jesus because the crosses in the dream will represent Jesus. It's interesting that the woman could see the crosses glowing on the ceiling but the children could not. Therefore, this woman represents those who are able to see Jesus in the midst of the process, in the midst of the darkness. And the only reason why she could lead others through the dark room is because she had been through the dark room. She knew where it was. She had been there before. Meaning you can't deliver someone from something that you have never gone through. Authority only comes with experience. So know that the reason why God allows you to go through the dark times is because you need experience. You can't properly lead others to a place you've never been through. Therefore, wait on the vision. And though it tarries, wait for it. Because when God brings you out of your process, you will have the ability to lead others out of theirs and with God given authority. In a dream, I stood behind a huge mahogany wooden door that was further up than my eyes could see. This door was like artwork. It had these unique, deep, circular carvings in it. The carvings appeared to be random, but I knew that they had been purposely and uniquely made. So in this dream, the door was simply representing opportunity and opening. Because the door was huge, it will represent a huge opportunity. But because the door was further up than my eyes could see. It would represent an opportunity so huge that I could possibly struggle to believe that it will ever manifest. It will represent something that would be almost impossible for me to believe. Further, according to research, mahogany wood is known for its beauty, stability, meaning perseverance, durability, meaning its endurance, and its resilience. In this mahogany door were deep cuts that looked random but had purpose. This would mean that God would begin to cut away from me to get deep, to get to the 
core of who I was so that he can change me and process me for this unique opportunity. I will need to be more stable, have the ability to persevere and be resilient because you, your character, it has to match whatever door God wants you to walk through. Therefore, when God is getting ready to open up a door in your life, an opportunity, expect God to cut away. Expect God to prune at the things in your life that are unbecoming so that your character can match that door, match that opportunity because God will never allow you to walk into a room that you can't properly stand in. And even though the cutting away may feel deep at times, it may feel random, but it still has purpose. Everything God allows in your life or takes away from it has purpose. And the process may not be pretty, but if you go through it, God will eventually produce something uniquely beautiful in your life. Father, thank you today that you are the God of beauty, a God who knows how to take the ugly situations in our lives and bring beauty out of them. Please help us keep our eyes on you as you lead us through the process of becoming everything we need to be. Cause us to believe the vision, no matter how impossible it may appear. Cause us to become in the midst of the dark moments. Bring creativity from our being so like you, we can produce something great in this world around us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here today. In the two videos on this screen, I discuss more dreams and give more insight on how you can remain faithful in times of dark moments. Have a wonderful day on purpose. Thank you for watching. Oh, my God.